this video, we'll lay out the geometry of our straight bridge along the global x-axis starting at zero. As seen in the diagram, the bridge pier will be at 100 feet, the final abutment is located at 200 feet, and the elevation axis will be the global z. In Larsa 4D, the user has several options in how they enter geometry. This includes entering data directly into spreadsheets, the model data explorer, drawing the geometry graphically with the mouse, the generation and transformation tools, or by importing geometry from other programs such as Excel or CAD software. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll input geometry properties directly into LARSA spreadsheets. This is the preferred input method of our users as LARSA spreadsheets are designed to display information clearly using textual names rather than numeric IDs whenever possible. When editing information in other areas of the program, they become a valuable asset as they're automatically refreshed whenever a new property is introduced or when a pre-existing property is revised. In this tutorial, model geometry consists of three types of objects, joints, members, and grounded springs. Joints represent connection points between elements and have six degrees of freedom. Members, which are two node line elements, are used to represent the bridge girder. Lastly, grounded springs are one node spring elements used to model soil structure interaction or connections between the bridge superstructure and piers or abutments at bearing sites. To begin defining geometry, Open the Input Data menu to select Geometry, and Notice Joints is the first spreadsheet that opens in the Geometry group. In the first row of the Joint spreadsheet, enter the coordinates 0, 0, 0. After the first value is entered, the row becomes initialized as a joint. We'll see here, after entering the coordinate information, that there's a new blank row to enter more data. New rows are automatically created after data has been entered into any of LARSA 4D spreadsheets. Repeat this process to enter joints at 100, 0, 0, and once more for 200, 0, 0. As the final structure in this tutorial will be supported by bearings modeled as grounded springs, there is no need to set any translation or rotation restraints here. To create the project girder, we could again use a spreadsheet, however this time we'll use the drawing tool to show more of the capabilities of LARSA 4D. To begin, switch over to the graphics view window by clicking the button located in the bottom left corner of the screen, and then click the zoom extents button to get a better view. We'll now set up the drawing command, which allows the user to select the joints where members are assigned. In the draw menu, Select Geometry, and then select Members from the submenu. In the Model Data Explorer, located on the right side of the screen, choose the appropriate section, Girder T section, and Material, Concrete FC4 for the girder, and then set the orientation angle to 90 degrees, which is the usual convention for horizontal members. As no other properties need to be set, we can now start to draw our members. Start by clicking the first, leftmost joint, and then click on the middle joint, or joint 2, which completes drawing the member for the first span. Now click the middle joint, and then the rightmost joint to create the member for the second span. As we can see, the members created feature the section, material, and orientation angles that we chose. To end the drawing process, we'll simply close the Draw Members window. To verify that the members have been properly set up, open the graphics menu and switch to the complete rendering option. From here we can use the graphics rotation tool to view the bridge from varied angles. In this tutorial, the pier will be modeled as a bearing at the bottom of the girder acting only in the Z direction using a grounded spring element. Although the joint is located at the girder centroid instead of the bottom of the girder, we can go ahead and ignore the eccentricity and place the support at the joint located at the girder centroid. 
We can do this because the bearing is only in the Z direction, while the bearing location and joint are aligned vertically. To model the pier bearing, return to the geometry spreadsheet and change to the Springs tab. Create a new row in the spreadsheet and type 2 into the I joint cell of Spring 1. To signify that this is a one node or grounded spring, we'll leave the J joint cell empty. In the same row, change the spring direction to trans Z and set its K tension value to 1E8. The K compression cell will then update to have the same value since a linear spring must have equivalent stiffness in both tension and compression. It's important to note that the spring directions entered are in relation to the joint displacement coordinate system directions. All of the joints in this tutorial use the global coordinate system as their displacement coordinate system, allowing us to have set this spring to act in the vertical direction. The abutments will also be supported using springs, which will restrict the deformation of the bridge in all directions of translation and the direction of axial rotation. It is always important to make sure that any model has no rigid body motions. We can do this by including enough restraints to prevent uncontrolled motion. The restraints mentioned previously will be enough to prevent rigid body motion in our bridge model. The bearings are connected at the bottom of the girder's web. However, the joints in the model have been placed at the girder's centroid. To connect it to the centroid, it's necessary to place a joint at the bottom of the web and connect it to the centroid using a rigid member element. To find out the distance from the centroid to the bottom of the web, we'll use Lars's Section Composer Tool. Lars's Section Composer Tool is accessed under the Tools menu. Once open, we'll access the database created by Larsa 4 d earlier using the File menu within the new window. While this is running, notice Larsa 4 d is still operating behind this window. Now click inside the T-shape to activate it. In the Shapes Explorer, located on the right side of the screen, change to the Points tab, then change Edit Local to View Global. This new view option shows the location of the points on the perimeter of the shape in the member reference coordinate system, which in this case is aligned with the member centroid. Let's also note the direction of the member reference axes in the graphics view of the cross section. We can see member positive Y is up as the member reference axes differ from the global coordinate system axes. The member reference Y axis corresponds to the global coordinate system Z axis because the member's orientation angle was set to 90 degrees. Once we make sure show point number is turned on in the view menu, we can identify a point number at the bottom of the web, points 5 or 6, and in the point spreadsheet, note the point's Y coordinate, which should read negative 52.8603 inches. Now we'll close the Section Composer tool, returning to Larsa 4D, and revisit the Joint Spreadsheet by clicking the Joint tab. Note that the Joint Coordinates units are displayed in feet, whereas they were displayed with inches in the Section Composer tool. We'll add a new row in the Spreadsheet, and in the Z cell field, enter equals negative 52.9 divided by 12 then hit the Enter key. Larsa 4D can compute simple formulas within its spreadsheets, so the value negative 4.4083 will be computed and entered into the spreadsheet, creating a joint at 0, 0, negative 4.4083. Unlike Excel, these formulas are not saved. Adding another row in the spreadsheet, we'll create a joint at 200, 0, negative 4.4083. The two new joints, 4 and 5, must be connected to the joints at the centroid, joints 1 and 3, using rigid connections. To create the rigid connection, change to the Rigid Links sub-tab and add two new rows to the spreadsheet, connecting joints 4 to 1 and joints 5 to 3. 
If bearings act in multiple directions, it is possible to put multiple grounded springs at a single joint, each acting in one direction, or a single grounded spring with a 6x6 stiffness matrix can be used to define its stiffness in all directions at once. In this tutorial, we'll use a 6x6 stiffness matrix. Open the Properties spreadsheet and name a new spring property definition, abutment bearing, then change its type to 6x6 stiffness matrix. If we right click the row, we can choose to edit the stiffness matrix. The spreadsheet that pulls up allows you to edit the 6x6 stiffness matrix for this element. Stiffness matrices are symmetric matrices that represent the relation between displacement and force. Each cell essentially represents a spring constant relating to one direction of displacement with one direction of force. For basic springs, only the diagonal cells are used and the off-diagonal cells are left as zero. Because the matrix must be symmetric, the cells below the diagonal cannot be edited. Diagonally, going from right from translation x to rotation x, enter 1E8, then close the window as well as the properties spreadsheet under it. We'll now create two more springs and assign the 6x6 stiffness matrix to the bearings. First, go back to the geometry spreadsheet and we'll notice the bearing we previously created is still there. At the bottom of the spreadsheet, add two new rows to assign springs at joints 4 and 5. Ignore the K-tension field this time and instead set the properties definition fields far to the right to abutment bearing for both new bearings then close the spreadsheet. Before running an analysis on the model it is important to break up the longer member elements into small pieces. This is because displacements are computed only at the locations of joints in the model so it's necessary to put joints at intermediate locations on each span. We'll use the Break Members tool to break the span members, which operates on selected geometry only. Under the Modify menu, select the Break Members tool to break the two selected members in the model into 10 pieces. Enter 10 for the number of segments in the Apply Transformation pop-up menu, and then click OK. With our bridge geometry now defined, we can continue on to the next section of this tutorial where we'll create a self-weight dead load case and perform a linear static analysis.